What's up guys, Ninth Jim here back with another VGC 2020 Pokemon Sword and Shield competitive video. Today we're talking about G-Max Grimmsnarl. That's right, G-Max Grimmsnarl is going to be legal here in just a few weeks. In March 1st, we transitioned to Season 3, and if you haven't if you haven't seen it yet, go over to Cerebi right now, pause this video, go to Cerebi, and then come back. It'll be the first thing. When you open up Cerebi, like Cerebi.net, the first thing you see is going to be the, the season three changes the season three rule changes which introduce a lot of pokemon first off it introduces all of our alolan starters all of our home pokemon regional forms things like Al alolan nine tails uh incineroar pokemon like that all of those are now going to be legal in march 1st for vgc and ranked and then also we have a big list of gmax pokemon that you can use this is one of them the other ones that i i have a little list that I have of car of, of things that I'm I'm going to do of Pokemon that I'm going to cover in guides and uh, G Max Lapras, G Max Orbeetle, Colossal, Hatterini, Owl Creamy. That's five, six with this big boy. But that's six new G Maxes that I think will be able to change the meta. All six are really powerful. They all have really really good moves. We'll cover them individually in videos, so I'm not going to go over them all now. However, this is the one that I'm the most excited for. I think. Maybe Lapras and maybe your beetle are, are on the same tier as this in my opinion um, As far as how excited I am not for how good they are. I think they're all very good um, However, I do think G the G max Grimmsnarl will see play. It's really really good If you don't know what his uh, G max attack is it's G max snooze what it does is it's a dark type attack um, Does huge damage of course 110 I think base power really really good and then it also sleeps or it yawns both opposing pokemon both of them so this is essentially it's really good <laughs> it's, it's really good is all i can say that it hits both pokemon or it hits one pokemon for damage but then makes both pokemon yawn so there's a couple of good ways around this you know you can um but you can't taunt him which is cool you can't stop this there's nothing that you can do to stop it it hits through protect it hits through it doesn't hit through max guard so you can max guard but that sucks it sucks to have to max guard and then you can also max thunderbolt max lightning set lightning terrain because nobody can sleep under lightning terrain because they're too wired or wired or something you know um but yeah so that's pretty relevant that makes this pokemon really really good um and then so that's why i have the duraludon right there because it can it can do that which is lame and make everybody just chill just stay awake but I digress this Pokemon is really good outside of um, Duraludon you can bring it in late game you don't have to open it you don't have to lead this Pokemon in fact it's actually really powerful if you bring it in late game because then they'll only have two maybe three Pokemon they can only like switch once you guaranteed sleeping people which is really good and also like if you do it early you get to guarantee make people make Pokemon switch out or um, or sleep some it's really really powerful this is it, it is a really powerful move so anyway, we're gonna go ahead and jump into a little bit of this Pokemon. I've covered Grimmsnarl before, however, this is a lot different of a build. We're going offensive Grimmsnarl today. I don't know if this is the optimal way to play it. It probably isn't. You probably just want to have Grimmsnarl as an option um, to be able to G Max it as an option, and probably just play it as the, as the other builds. You know, like dual screens with reflect and light screen. You know, or like toolboxy moves, things like Swagger for your Mudsdale. You know, Trick, uh, potentially Trick eject button kind of deal you know what i mean but uh, this is just an up in the air build where a week and a half away from the game transitioning into this into this new meta with new g maxes and a bunch of past pokemon so i think this is more this is more so of just a uh where could they be you know is this a is this gonna be good i don't know who's to say you know but it's really powerful we've seen dark void be unbelievable in the past that just sleeps both pokemon this yawns both Pokemon, which is less powerful, but insane. Still really, really good, in my opinion. So anyway, uh, Dark Fairy type. So we're going to get into immunities, Psychic Dragon, Resistances, Ghost Dark, and Weaknesses, Poison Steel Fairy. This really isn't that bad overall. This Pokemon is actually decently bulky. Um, not insanely bulky, but with HP 95, Max Invested Dynamax or Gigantamax, you actually are able to live a bunch of attacks. We have damage calcs for that. Um, I don't have single spotlight for this today because I don't think you can use Gigantamaxes in singles. Um, I may be wrong. Correct me in the comments. I don't play singles very much. 
I don't play singles at all, but I want to play it a little bit. But yeah, if you if you can use this guy in singles, then let me know. I'll put a build in the comments or the description. You know what I mean? But yeah, for now we only have VGC today. Um, long intro, sorry about that. And then stats, we have an HP 95, it's pretty solid. Attack 120, defense 65, and special defense 75. Special attack is actually high, uh, really, really high at 95. Not really, really high, but high enough to take away from the rest of our stat pool, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. And then speed 60, which I wish was higher, but it isn't, and it's fine. Uh, I wish we could just move like 35 speed from special or stats from special attack to, thir to speed. Move 35 from special attack to speed. That's what I meant to say. Anyway, yeah, so like it's not bad speed uh, stats across the board, which is really good, making it decently bulky, really good attack stat at 120. It makes this Pokemon actually deal really good damage, as well as Gigantamax. It also still has Prankster for a couple of moves, um, you know, and you only have to have a couple of moves. You have to have that dark move for the G-Max Snooze. And then I have Spirit Break one here. You, you could definitely s switch around some attacks. You know, I have some right above me right there um, that if you want to look at, we'll talk about them here, though. Um, anyway, without further ado, into the actual build itself. Six something minutes in. I'm my intros are stupid, but timestamps in the description, so you can always go around, like go around it and and just go right to it. Anyway, into the actual build. So ability is prankster. You can use Frisk definitely. I still like prankster when this Pokemon isn't Gigantamaxed, um, which it is supposed to live. Like you want it to live. And then you can, uh, you have Thunder Wave and Taunt. You could also always do this before Gigantamaxing. Your opponent won't always expect you to Gigantamax. You'll be able to, uh, they'll think you're like gonna set up a screen or something and you're just like Taunt or Thunder Wave. Get some speed control, get some, uh, some Pokemon to do nothing. It's pretty solid. I really like that, um, having Prankster. I, I like the, you know, versatility of this Pokemon. Um, and then we also have Darkest, Lariat, and Spirit Break. Those are just our stab moves for those. You can go with Foul Play instead of Darkest Lariat. However, it's higher BP. Um, actually, is Foul Play higher BP? I'm not sure. But I like Darkest Lariat. I think it's good. It, it's really good against a lot of things um, that just get big, you know, like Snorlax and uh, like Curse Lax or um, anything like that. It just gets through a lot of, uh, it just breaks through a lot of walls, which is really good. I like Darkest Lariat. You can definitely go with Foul Play though. And then we also have Spirit Break. I like Spirit Break. You can go with Play Rough. Play Rough gives you an extra 10, I think, battle power uh, or base power, which is a lot, but not enough to not use Spirit Break. I like Spirit Break a lot. It lowers their special attack, I believe. Am I dumb for not knowing that? Yeah, yeah, special attack. It lowers your special attack by one stage guaranteed, which is really good. And then when you Gig Gigantamax, it's Max Starfall, which is good. And uh, we have a lot of Calyx, and they're really good. Um, and then Thunder Wave and Taunt, those are my two priority moves that we can use. You can still use screens on this set, too, by all means, you know. Uh, by all means, use some screens if you want to. Uh, anyway, into our flex moves. So we have both screens here. Reflect and Light Screen, you can definitely use those. They're really good. Um, always going to be relevant, you know, especially on a prankster, prankster Pokemon, you can run light clay instead of leftovers. We're running leftovers on this set just because we want them to stick around for a while. Life Orb, it didn't feel right putting Life Orb on it because you Dynamax, like, Gigantamaxing it, leftovers just felt fine. You know, you can definitely run a Pinch Berry, you can run Citrus Berry, you can run some kind of berry, um, leftovers. I've seen Choice Band on Offensive Grimmsnarl, I wouldn't use that, but you could. We're, since we're intending on Gigantamaxing, like, the choice items aren't really that powerful, you know, because you don't get the buff. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. And then we also have Fake Out, which is a good move. However, like I said, we're trying Gigantamax. We don't really want to max strike people. Like, it's not that good. And then Swagger is just another option, another Prankster option that you can use, especially if you're running, like, Mudsdale and Tempo, something like that on your team as another option so that you don't have to, you're not locked into, like, Grimmsnarl, G-Max, get big, you know. Um, anyway, then uh, we also have Foul Play. I talked about that a little. And then you get all the punch moves, Fire Punch, Thunder Punch. I think we get Ice Punch. You know, I, Ice Punch, we do. Um, so yeah, all the punch moves, we have all of those, which is good. You know, just gives us a variety of attacks that we could use on this Pokemon. Fire Punch, Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, all good options. You can definitely run them. They give us access to good max moves. You know, if you're gonna, if you're planning on setting Sunny Day, then boom, Fire Punch, you get Big Punch. Um, Thunder Punch, you can max Lightning the area so that your opponent can't max snooze you. I wouldn't do that because we want to max snooze people, but... 
yeah and then we also have trick as our last move if you wanted to run like choice band or something you can um but like i said you know you can't max uh you don't get any boost out out of maxing so i'd like if you want to get more damage i'd definitely go life orb over anything like that um ooh. anyway that is going to be it for our actual move set um now we have uh our stats so hp we just maxed 252 into it and then 252 and into attack and then adamant nature giving us plus attack minus special attack this is just giving us the most damage output as well as most health especially when we're gigantamaxed maxing your hp and then dynamaxing we hit 202 404 after gigantamaxing over 400 health that's so much health that's monumental we are living a lot a lot of stuff and you'll see in our damage calcs we're really really uh we're really bulky, honestly, um, when we G-Max. So you can really set off a lot of G-Max snoozes and then protect and then have Togekiss there as follow me. And then you can just live for a while and snooze everybody. And it, it really is. It's pretty dirty. And I like it a lot. Um, so yeah, that's it for our build. We're going to talk about our synergies real quick. So Togekiss gives us follow me, like I was saying. Um, I just like a follow me user on this so that you can keep your G-Max Grimmsnarl alive. You know, your opponent's going to be like, all right, go Dynamax guy, Dar Dynamax Charizard. You get to live an extra turn, set off that that snooze. Your opponent has to make a choice. Do I want to attack and either kill the Togekiss or, or do damage to Grimmsnarl? Or do I want to switch out and not go to sleep? It's a really good, it's it's really good having that buffer turn because of follow me. And I just like it. I value, I feel like I value it a lot on Grim, on G-Max Grimmsnarl team to have follow me of some sort. And I think this is better than Ndidi because if you have Ndidi, Psychic Surge, and then you get un maxed you can't really Thunder Wave or Taunt anything. So I would just go with, I, I like Togekiss, I think it's better um, in general. I think it's better in general too. You know, why wouldn't you? You know, maybe friend guard Clefa or Clefairy. That's another option. I like that. Actually, I like that idea a lot. It makes you bulkier. It gives you that follow me, but it's really squishy. So, you know, you have back and forth there. And then we also have Corviknight, which covers all of our weaknesses. Poison is unaffected. Steel is resisted. Fairy is resisted. So that's really good. It also kills uh, all fairies for us. We don't even have to worry about it. And then you can also um, set up the snooze, make people sleep. And then just be like, all right, bulk up, iron defense, body press, kill everything with Corviknight. I think that's a really cute little synergy that you can have. Pretty good. Um, just pretty good in general, I think. And then we also have, so Raichu here. Raichu is weird. So Duraludon is the big scare, right? So it has Thunder. It has Thunderbolt. A lot of them, a lot of uh, builds carry Thunderbolt. I've been cutting it a lot recently, but I still think it's really relevant to know that that is an option and so dynamax and duraludon or Gi no no Di dynamax i don't think it gets your it's gigantamax this this time wait does it no it doesn't okay okay we're good Di dynamax grimmsnarl i said grimmsnarl dynamax duraludon is a big problem for this pokemon since it sets lightning uh max lightning and then it sets electric terrain on the on the field and then you can't g max snooze i've talked about that a little bit but that really sucks that means we our g max is kind of just wasted it's not wasted because we're, we're still doing like good damage we have good attack and we're doing a lot of damage and we're pretty bulky but i'd rather i'd value i wouldn't value it that highly you know i would way rather do something else any other guy giant gigantamax or dynamaxing it's just more important it just doesn't do enough um without snoozing everything so you want to kill the guy first you want to kill Duraludon first, or just wait until like the Duraludon's like not maxed anymore. If you d if you didn't show off your G Max and Grimmsnarl, they're not going to set Electric Terrain unless it it like you know unless they have to use that attack. Which if you have like a Wash Rotom, my Low Tick, maybe the Togekiss, they might use it, but you never know, you know. And then you could also just wait out those five turns if your team is really stally and bulky. You know, you could definitely wait that time out. I mean, we wait out Trick Room all the time, you know, so why wouldn't you be able to? Um, anyway, so I talked about Duraludon, but the Raichu, um, if your opponent uses something like Max Rotom or something and then go for that that Max Lightning to set up the electric terrain so they can't sleep, you can switch in your, your Raichu and then Lightning Rod, absorb that Lightning Bolt attack, raise your special attack, and then not set electric terrain. And it's re that's really 
powerful. So this is definitely that's definitely an option. You could run on your team something like the the Grim Snarl, and then you could also run like a Gyarados package with Gyarados Raichu and like Togekiss or something. And then you have so many different ways that you can go about the team or go about battling that. G Max Grim Snarl isn't the main guy. However, you can always run it into the Snooze, which is really, really powerful. And then you could also max uh, your Gyarados and then just go power, powerhouse into it. There's a lot of different ways you can run this Pokemon and run it on teams. So I like it a lot. I think it's going to be definitely good and impact the meta. Anyway, that's going to be it for this part. We're going to go into speed tiers real quick. And I don't have a single spotlight, like I said. So it's just going to be speed tiers, damage calcs, and then goodbye. Um, anyway, so speed tiers we hit 80 um we're on the same speed tier as lapras g max lapras is coming out it's gonna happen you're gonna run into lapras sometimes i'm telling you and then we also have galarian wheezing on the same speed tier neither of those are too relevant right now lapras will still not be insanely relevant i think it's really good it says both screens reflect and light screen it's really powerful and um it's really good I like it a lot. You can run Lapras and Alola Ninetales or Lapras Vanillax and then set up a Roarvel the same turn. You fold to fake it or not fake out. You fold to the Brick Break or the Psychic Fangs. But still. You have also Psychic Fangs, by the way, hint hint, is gonna be on every Drake of Vision Dragapult. Not every one of them, but that's an option. And if Lapras is big in the meta, that's a really good option that we'll cover in, in the future. Um, anyway, so yeah, outspeeding us, Alcremie, G-Max Alcremie is coming. Um, Gothitelle and Mimikyu all outspeed us every time. I mean, Gothitelle might not outspeed us every time. It could be run, um, ran min speed. It will be ran min speed a lot of the time. Going down to that, like, around 65 tier. So, we'll be able to outspeed Gothitelle a bunch of the time. But not all the time, because a lot of them will be uninvested, not hindering. Um, and then things that we will outspeed is Scrafty most of the time, uninvested. Sometimes it'll be fast, so we won't always outspeed it. And then Sableye will all usually outspeed. We like Sableye can run. Um, Sableye can be ran fast, you know, with Sash instead of like a Berry in bulk. So you can like Sableye might outspeed you too. And then Conkledor also may outspeed you sometimes. Um, we've seen uh, like so Conkledor will usually run, not usually, but a lot of the time will run. Not a lot of the time either. Um, sometimes Conkledor will run a little bit of speed, mostly to for Tailwind to be able to outspeed certain things like uh, Duraludon. However, it's all good. We'll usually outspeed Conkledor, and we kill Conkledor like every time. We're gonna go on to our speed tiers here, not speed tiers, our damage calcs, and here we are. Our first one is Bye Bye Conkledor, G Maxed, Grim Snarl, 252 Adamant. Max Starfall into that Conkledor does 114 to 136% guaranteed knockout. This is 248, but that one extra edge P won't, won't do enough. We'll still kill it every time, which is really good. And that's a very valuable thing to be able to just Oko Conkledor like nothing. Get it out of here. That's really good. Um, and then we also have Togekiss, Dazzling Gleam into our G-Maxed boy. It's 25 to 29. This is multi-targeting. So if we're the only Pokemon, obviously it'll do more. But... Only hitting uh, 25 to 29 is not bad. That is uninvested Togekiss, however, and now we have our Max Starfall. This is Dynamax Offensive Togekiss into our Grim Snarl, our poor little Grim Snarl. Only 65 to 77%, though. Not too bad. We can Max Darkness um, them back, keep them snoozed. Really good. That's G Max Snooze is really, really powerful against opposing Dynamax slash Gigantamax in turn one. It's really, really powerful and just very, very oppressive to your opponent they're like wow so i only get half of my dynamax um two turns so like two thirds and then just go to sleep like it sucks it really sucks so it's, it's a really powerful move and then we have our gmax starfall into dragapult dynamaxed hitting 31.3 percent chance to oko that's a lot of damage however i would probably just go for a snooze a lot of the time against it if it doesn't max snooze will kill it and then also if it does uh does dynamax snooze will still do like 60 to 70 percent but then like i said we it's pretty valuable to uh stop that pokemon um in his tracks if it's dynamaxing especially if we activate his weakness policy because a lot of dynamaxing um dragapults will run weakness policy um and then next we have our charizard dynamax solar power under a sun max flare into us only hits 68 to 80 percent I say only, but that's a lot of damage. But it's it doesn't kill us, which is important. So it doesn't kill us. They outspeed us. 
So they attack us for a lot of damage, right? And then we hit that G-Max Snooze. Now they have to make the decision, do I want one more turn to kill that Grimmsnarl? Do I want to attack? And then, or do I want to switch out? Lose your Dynamax. You, so you lose your Dynamax and switch out, or you use your last turn of Dynamax. Oh, your second to last turn, but you're, you're asleep for the last turn. And then we, but we have max guard so we can just sleep them and then max guard the next turn and then they either have to switch out and our par partner pokemon can put in like a lot of work at that point too and then we're looking we're just in a really good position when that happens in, in my opinion so g max snooze is really really powerful and then g max snooze also just kills jellicent like bye bye bubba um we hit 147 to 173 percent just guaranteed oko just get that out of there a lot of them run cassie berry instead of colber berry maybe they'll return to colber berry soon um it's like you know it's it's a higher percentage of them running cassie berry than colber um anyway we're we didn't do single spotlight and we're still at 20 minutes because i talk forever i just keep talking my intro was really long i wanted to cover that information though about the uh the new g maxes and the new pokemon that are legal and I preface that in all of these G Max videos that are coming out, I'm gonna like taper them between. Uh, there'll be like one G Max, one new Pokemon, and then one request. I still have a bunch of requests piled up. If if you requested something and I haven't done it yet, I'm sorry. Um, I think the next one I'm gonna do is like Lucario probably, um, and then Meowstic, Decidueye, Poltergeist, and all the G Maxes, and I'm gonna like you know pop a g max in so it'll be like lucario tomorrow and then probably like orbital or lapras g max and then the next day another request probably decidui maybe meowstic and then yeah yeah you get it I'll, I'll be doing a guide every day don't worry they're coming uh i have like 10 that i have piled up that i know i'm gonna do and past that i'm not sure yet but we'll see how it goes so anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't watched yet, I have a giveaway. It was the last video that I uploaded before this one. Um, go check it out if you haven't yet. You just got to like that video, subscribe, be subscribed to the channel, and comment down below. Own that video, which starter of the Kanto starters you want the pop for. That's the giveaway, um, is these guys. These guys right here. Uh, I have all three, all three of the starters, so. Go check that out if you're interested. If you're not, go over and still show some love. Hit that like even if you're not enjoying it. Or not enjoying it. Hit that like even if you're not entering. But yeah, like and subscribe if you like this content. I love, uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you and bye.